Anthony Tomasini from the New York Times, and I was just playing one of my favorite moments of Puccini's opera, Tosca. Tosca has been a staple of the opera houses ever since its premiere in 1900 in Rome. But this year, my goodness, it seems to be everywhere. Both the Metropolitan Opera and the Lyric Opera of Chicago opened their seasons with productions of Tosca. You can hear it in Houston, you can hear it in Munich. So I thought with Tosca in the air, I would talk about it a little. But I don't want to do a primer on Tosca. I want to focus on this very specific question, this Puccini's ingenious way of using themes or motifs or mini themes associated with various characters and elements of the opera uh, to enhance the emotional power of the, of the work and to trigger responses in listeners. The most famous leitmotif, if you want to call it that, in uh, Tosca comes at the very beginning of the opera. The opera starts like this. Now the second part of this is the four note theme with these chords associated with Angelotti, who's a secondary but crucial character. He's an escaped prisoner from uh, the villain Scarpia's you know, clutches. Angelotti is a Republican sympathizer. He's a rebel um, and he's a good friend of Mario's and he's just escaped from the prison. But the opera begins with Scarpia's theme. three chords, B flat, A flat, and E, are not harmonically very closely related. So it makes Scarpia seem like a kind of out of control guy. Now even before we meet him, every time we hear somebody refers to Scarpia, these chords seem to come back in various guises. Um, but when he finally makes his grand entrance, the orchestra blares his theme. But then all the people in the church at the time, the priests, the sacristan, and the, uh, the choir boys, they're terrified and they all go scattering. And the orchestra plays his theme in this kind of dance-like way. It's almost mocking and playful. I call it Scarpius Fandango. My explanation for that is like Scarpia is enjoying the way everybody just flees from him. He's sort of strutting. The really subtle and genius use of the Scarpia chords come in Act Two. Mario has been arrested and tortured by Scarpia for having aided this prisoner, Angelotti. Now, Scarpia hates Mario for two reasons. One, Mario is the lover of Tosca and he lusts after Tosca, but two, Mario is a rebel, he's a Republican. Now, he's condemned Mario to be executed, but he has this proposition for Tosca. If you will sleep with me just once, I'll free him and I'll let the both of you go. At this moment, his three chord theme gets stuck on the first two chords because he's waiting for her answer. He's breathless. Well, what do you say to my proposition? And finally, there's the E. Tosca says nothing, but you hear this in the orchestra. And then again, still silent, she nods. Okay, I'll do it. And you hear this. Because you hear that music later when Mario is executed. But what are these chords? You know, what is she thinking of? And that's what's going on. What is the orchestra trying to tell us? Well, if you remember Angelotti from the beginning, um, what, he has arrived in the, uh, the very beginning. We first hear this. His sister has left him a key at the uh, base of the statue of the Madonna with some clothing and food in order to help him escape. And when he searches around the base of the statue, you hear that motive. searches around the Madonna statue we hear those chords. The sacristan comes in, uh, this kind of funny, bumptious character, and he's bringing Mario some lunch. There's all the way at the beginning of Act One. He's also doing a little dusting. And when he dusts around the, sta the base of the statue of the Madonna, again, you hear that motive. But you almost lose it because the music's so playful. But 
there it is. So that explains what Tosca, what's going on with Tosca at that moment when Scarpia makes this proposition. She thinks to herself and she prays for a moment. She's saying to the Madonna, there's nothing I can do. I've got to go along with this hateful man. This does get at a bigger question in the arts of why does a particular work of art move me? It's very hard to say sometimes. But actually, looking at this opera this way, you can kind of say. You can say, wow, that little theme, I heard that before, and I remember it, and I felt so, it moved me so much at the time, and now it's in a very different context, and it really gets to you, and Puccini's very, very clever about manipulating you in this way. And I'll leave you this one more example. Characters can borrow and steal from and adapt each other's themes, and that happens here, I think. I'm not, can't be sure, but this, what, the way I hear it, this short phrase from Mario's big, his big aria of love to Tosca, Reconditi Armonia, in Act One. Scarpia kind of borrows it when he's trying to get his, seduce to, Tosca in a way. It's, act one, it's in Act One, he's being very gallant. He is an aristocrat, after all, and he dips his hand in holy water and he offers it to her so that she can make the sign of the cross and this is what the orchestra plays in the church and he joins in. Now I love this moment because it's very clever musically of Puccini you know to have adapted the, you know interrelated these two themes but it's also Scarpi is a monster but you, for this one moment, you kind of sympathize with him. I mean, he is being very gallant, and uh, it's just the music is, in a way, Puccini's trying to lure you to that point of view, too, that give the guy a break, just for a moment.